Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Unify Controller 6.036 has been out for a few days. Today is November 25th, 2020. And we finally updated to the six version series. Actually, we've been updating some of the clients to it. Some of them, well, updated themselves to it and we've troubleshot some problems. We moved our controller to this and troubleshot some problems. And I wanna talk about what those problems you may run into are. And that's what this video is gonna be about is yes, it's probably time to upgrade to it unless you're just one of those people that wanna hold out forever, that's fine too. There's not at this moment any known issues fixed in 6036 in terms of security that needed to be addressed from the 5 series. So if you're holding out and waiting a little bit longer, that's fine. But I want to talk about in terms of if you do update what you might run into, what are those edge cases that cause problems, which ones we dealt with. And I did get plenty of input from Riley Chase over at Hostify, who discussed this with me as well, because he's updated way more controllers than me. I believe he has over 1,200 of them right now on the Hostify service. I have a review if you're not familiar with the Hostify service, and if you don't want to deal with updates, they're a great solution because, well, Riley does a great job with Hostify and him and his team keep them up to date. Before we dive into the details and talk about the upgrade, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. It's been two months since this release of the 6.020 controller to, well, they called it stable, but we're not going to pick on them for that. It's less than stable was the 6020. There was a lot of major redesign changes. And with those changes come the challenges from changing that many things at once. And this was the video I made that said, don't upgrade to 6.020. They've had numerous revisions since bringing us all the way to 6036. I feel as though they've stabilized the problems. They've learned from all the little edge cases and ways people have deployed these that are maybe um, different than the developers had expected, which caused all these little problems. And very specifically, one of the major problems is if you have WLAN groups and they're defined differently now, and that did not migrate very well. And let me show you, if we go over here to the wireless settings, What's missing is a little spot right here for defining the WLAN groups. This is what an old controller looked like. Oddly, the demo.ui.com still runs version 5.11. I thought that was interesting. And in the old version, here is the WLAN groupings. This allows you to create a group and then apply that group policy essentially to those access points. So let's say you have a group of them in one area, you can apply a group setting and then group them together to have a common setting and another group for another common setting. And this is good for if you have a single network with maybe a hundred access points, we'll just throw a number out there, deployed, and you want like 50 of them because they're in one area of a building to have only these SSIDs, but the, another group of SSDs, SSIDs or special configuration, you would build them out in these groups. They handle that a lot differently now. And the migration from the old version to the new broke a lot of things. The migration seems to work pretty good, but there are some exceptions. And if you do run into problems, all you really have to do is rebuild those groups, not a major problem, but at least knowing what to do. And the way you do that is we're going to go ahead and edit this. And right here is that AP group name. Now, my site doesn't use any groups. We do have a couple clients and some of them updated their controllers and they have some large groups. All we had to do was, well, get rid of the groups and put them back in and that fixed it. And this is where you create the group now. So hit create AP group. I can then put them into this new group that I create and I'm not gonna save it and away we go. So this is where most of the problems occurred besides what did occur in the 6020, which was some weird uh, bridging VLAN, another edge case scenario that I guess didn't always translate. And I wasn't able to reproduce it. I have a lab video I did on that. I wasn't able to reproduce the problem, but it, it sounds like if you build it new, it doesn't happen. But some migrations had some trouble where if you were bridging two different wireless access points together, essentially in a mesh, and you had a switch on the other side, so you're using 
instead of like a site to site, you were using the devices themselves. Those sometimes have issues. All you had to do was reprovision them and it seemed to fix it. It's kind of a weird edge case and it's not something I was able to directly reproduce, but there's been some workarounds for that. And it doesn't seem to occur at all in the 6036 controller. So uh, if you were having those problems and you're still having upgraded from 6020, getting the 6036 should solve any of those issues. Now, this is the problem I do have with where they move things around. So I was confused and thought, hey, they removed, and we're going to go down here to maintenance, and right here's log level support information and firmware. And this is what it looks like on the old controller. Here's those statistics data retention. It is important that you set these so you don't overload the controller when you have a larger site and making sure these are right. This is something that it even warns you in the new uh, version that if you have a cloud key, if you have this set too high to too much data retention, you may overload it. And this can cause some problems if you don't have a controller that can handle the volume of information. And I thought it was odd that it is just missing. This is the new version. But it's not missing. This is where they have slowly moved things into the new interface, but not completely move things into the new interface. So let me show you. We go over here to try new settings. Here's the new interface. We go down here to system settings. We scroll down. We got maintenance. And there's our statistic retention. It exists in the new settings. It does not exist in the old settings anymore. So my initial confusion was they seem to have removed this and this is kind of a problem. And well, it's not removed, it's just moved. Uh, that is one problem. And the next problem is while we're in the new settings, we're gonna go here to networks. That's all we have defined right here is just this network, but we don't. We go over here to Wi-Fi and it does list my network and what VLAN it's attached to. So this network is native LAN, VLAN 69, IoT and secure. And we're gonna go back over here to system settings and we're going to turn off these new settings, go to apply, go back to here, there's all my networks. So the network groupings, the network and VLAN defining only works in the old interface, but not the new one. But then when we go back over here to wireless networks, they're not displayed right here. But don't worry, I can still create an edit network. So if I go to edit this network, for example, here we go, I can apply this. Now, another problem you'll have, if you're only running Unify access points and you don't have any other switches, and you have defined VLANs, let's say on a different brand switch, but not define them under the network setting, you can't type in the VLAN anymore. That was another problem that was created. So you'll have to go and edit those manually because it doesn't have a way to assign them. Now they are selected and pulled down based on the creation of them here. And I understand why they did this. This is essentially one of the problems we've run into where people will go in, create a VLAN, and put a different number because of a typo, because of a mistake, and have a different number within their network settings versus what they had in the wireless. Now that's not even possible because it has to be chose from a pull down here. And so if you've manually put some of these in and didn't define them and you do the upgrade, you'll find those wireless networks may not function. And all you have to do is go create the network with the matching VLAN. Those are the only real major issues we found. And we've had a few clients that upgraded some larger sites and not too big of a deal. Now, when it comes to the way they do the wireless groupings, it actually makes a little bit more sense the way they do everything underneath each of the wireless. So if we go here to edit and we want to create that group, so you can still do the groupings and we were still able to fix that for clients that have those larger groups for the way they want to do things, that worked pretty well. Now, the wireless settings are nice the way they look in here. And also, I got to admit, when I go back over here to new settings and we're editing the networks over here, they look reasonably nice in here. But I still don't have a hundred percent in the new settings. So this is where it gets a little confusing again. I don't think there's anything I need the new settings for except the, when we go to system and that maintenance of adjusting, if you need to do any statistics retention changes, which happens to be here, uh, that's so far the only thing I think you have to go to the new menu for. And of course, actually having it displayed right here to show your APs. It's kind of a weird blend to have this mix at the same time. It's going to be nice when everything's in one or the other. I'm not completely sold on this new interface. To me, it takes up a lot more space. I like the more condensed version of this. So hopefully they will take some time and look at the UI and I'm going to switch back to the old one. This is still my preferred way to do it. This just is easier to see everything kind of at a glance. 
it, it seems like they would be able to solve this problem. But like I said, as they kind of migrate things, mix back and forth, but that's kind of a minor complaint. I had a few people mention uh, that there are some changes in the statistics page. I didn't see anything that was problematic. Um, Someone said there were a few errors, but these errors seem to occur when I was pushing out some of the updates. I didn't see anything broken in here, and I wasn't 100% clear on some of the complaints people had. Uh, someone else had tagged me in Twitter and didn't like the color change too. So I, it's sometimes I have to try to spend time sorting through the noise to make sure I understand what the real problems are. And uh, so far, you know, upgrading the sites and the larger clients that we did with some larger sites that it wasn't too bad. I mean, I can't say that the problems were insurmountable or took that much time. Mostly it had to do with just the way the WLAN groupings uh, were. Now we do not have, but we have a handful of USGs, but not a lot of them that are out there in a the field that clients have deployed. We don't actively deploy them. I've talked about this before because I don't find them to be the most robust or functional when it comes to features, but uh, those upgrades have gone as well. Same thing with firmware updates. We've been pushing firmware updates. I think I only have one, yeah, one and two devices left on my network that I haven't pushed firmware updates for, and that's all gone really well with the new version. So overall, I would say, yes, it's probably time to upgrade. I don't really see any more bugs like they had. I mean, there's always going to be something to do. There are still, in, feel free to read through this. There's pages, about seven of them, of people talking about little issues. There are a couple unusual, and people talk about their use cases where apparently certain devices, when they wanted to split the radios to do different things, some of those features are done. I usually don't split the radios to have different radios doing different things. And it's only with certain models because some models like the Base Station XG have a couple extra radios. And I believe there was a way to program each radio differently. And some of those are grouped together now. I was a little fuzzy on that. I don't have, I looked around, none of our clients had one, so I could try to reproduce the problem. We didn't have any model of exactly the one the person had, but read through there and look to see if that may affect you. And it's something that'll probably be addressing in another update. But overall, yes, it feels like it's time to update. Now, one last thing about the updates and the way we process and the way we do them is I do not have it turned on to auto. We do run our own controller. We do run this in our own virtualization stack. So I back up the virtual machine and I have the updates that I load manually. The reason I do that is I don't want surprises that, well, such as the ones that came from if you were to auto update. Some people have auto update turned on. So we went head on with some of their systems because they go, oh yeah, we we just had that turned on. Can you help us? Because then it was some of the grouping problems, of course. Some people had no problems at all. If you don't have any of these edge cases, I've had a few people mention they went from the 6.020 uh, or even the 5.x to the 6.0 and every subsequent one in between, and they've had no problems at all. It really only seems to be, and this is reiterated to me by uh, Riley Chase from Hostify as well, that if you have the edge case problems, and you have certain scenarios, yes, there may be some problems, uh, there may be some issues, but hey, read through the documentation, make sure you understand what those problems are, and then look for the workarounds from before you deploy. I'll leave links to this so you can do your own reading, and uh, happy updating. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.